Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to go through the functionality and features of Mesh Optimizer Champ. First and foremost, if you are migrating this to another project, please make sure you've got the plugins enabled that are on the screen right now. This is also available in the readme file that comes with the download. With our plugins enabled, we can go to selection mode and scriptable tools. Here we can see the three tools that come with Mesh Optimizer Champ. Let's first look at the scatter mode. For our mesh setup, we can drag in our static meshes into one of five groups. We can control how meshes in this group spawn using the group settings. Anytime we change the group settings or any meshes in our groups, we must click update mesh groups. This will reconfigure the spawning instructions for all of our groups. We can spawn in the editor by left clicking with the mouse. We can also click and drag. We can select all the meshes that we've spawned with the select all spawned actors button and hit delete if we want to delete them. We can also clean up any mistakes by using Ctrl and Z for undo or we can hold Ctrl and left click or left drag to delete any meshes that we don't want. Let's take a look at the group settings. Frequency covers how many times we try and pull an object from this group to spawn. It will then move on to the next group if applicable. We can change the mesh selection type from random to sequence. Random will select any of the static meshes in the array at random Sequence will select them in order. In this case, because we have a frequency of one, this will always select the first object only. As we have three objects in our array, if we make it three and update our mesh groups, we will spawn them in exactly the same order every time. When using sequence, we can also batch our objects. There are four rotation types. No rotation will not add any rotation to the object. Random rotation will add a random rotation to the objects. Random rotation Z only will add a rotation only around that axis. Manual rotation will let you enter a manual rotation in degrees as well as a variance across each of the three axes. Scale min and max will allow you to add variations to the scale of the objects at random between two points. This is useful for organic materials like rocks or sticks. Object weight is only relevant for simulation mode and it will define how the objects react when dropped using physics. You can create your own custom physics material by going into the materials folder in Mesh Optimizer Champ and changing the physical material custom. For small objects, you may want to use CCD as this can help prevent them from falling through the landscape. When using multiple groups, frequency will allow us to define how many objects are spawned from each group before moving on to the next group. When spawning objects in simulation mode, use the start and stop simulation buttons as part of the tool, as opposed to running simulation at the top. When you select simulation, you will need to reselect your scatter tool before you can use it. Once you've finished spawning your objects, 
you can either press save simulated meshes to ensure that these meshes will be saved to load back into the editor or if you press stop simulation save meshes on stop simulation is true it will automatically save them for you back in the editor if we select scatter and then we select load simulated meshes we can load them back into our scene ready to merge them into a single actor when spawning a lot of meshes, particularly in confined spaces, you'll find that sometimes this causes a bobbling effect as the physics start to interact and conflict with each other. If you need to settle any of the meshes down, you can click stop physics on all meshes and this will turn all the physics off any meshes that are currently in the scene. This way you can easily layer up any of your meshes in stages. Drop height changes the height we spawn our objects from when in simulate mode. Spawn frequency defines how often we spawn an object when click dragging with the mouse. Drag axis lock will lock the axis we spawn based on the first click to that axis. Minimum spacing will set the minimum space between objects by testing the edges of geometry. This is useful to prevent objects from overlapping. Minimum spacing trace method will give an option between complex or simple collision. Complex collision is generally the best method to use and will fall back to simple collision in most cases anyway. Minimum spacing approach has the option of standard or size discrepancy. Size discrepancy is helpful when you have objects that vary in size that you're placing next to each other. Use bounds to place on surface is helpful when you have a mesh where the pivot is in the middle of the mesh or it's rotated. Only add physics in simulation mode will not add physics to objects when placed in editor mode. Use actual mesh names will use the actual name of the mesh rather than a placeholder MOC SM actor. Mesh preview allows you to preview your mesh before you place it. There are two preview options, proxy mesh and actual mesh. When in simulate mode, we spawn a kill zone to protect from any meshes that may fall through the surface. This mesh will destroy any objects on contact. We can set the scale and offset of the mesh here, but in most cases, you shouldn't need to change it. The merge tool will select all spawned meshes and merge them into a single actor. This uses a standard Unreal function with some additional advantages. First, we can set the pivot position as part of this operation. Default is to have this at the center bottom of the mesh so it places perfectly on the scene when dragged from the content browser. We also have the option of placing it in the very center of the mesh or not placing a pivot at all. We have the option of merging the materials into a single material. If you're using actors that use many different materials, as this will be a single texture set, you will probably want to use a large texture size. If you're going to export the final mesh into another version of Unreal or another program, 
you'll want to extract the merge material on textures. You can choose which texture maps are created when merging your material. By default, normal metallic and roughness are selected, but you can change any of these. If you want more finite control over merge actor settings, you can do that in the settings details section. Any overrides need to be changed in the merge override setting above. Anything that's not covered there can be changed in the actor details settings. If your save location folder doesn't exist, then Unreal will try and create a new save folder for you in that location. When you're happy with your settings, you can just select the Merge Selected Actors button to merge your actors into a single mesh. If you want to reduce the triangle count of your mesh, either for performance or disk size, you can do that using the Optimize feature. There are four functions for reducing triangles on a mesh. The first simply reduces the number of polygons. This can be done using multiple methods and this is a standard Unreal function that's been exposed. You can optimize the type using percentage or triangle count to try and get to a target number of polygons. Removing hidden triangles will attempt to remove triangles that are hidden within the mesh and unlikely to be seen. You can use the remove hidden try options to change how aggressive this method is. Remove ground facing triangles will attempt to find any triangles that are facing the ground, so again, unlikely to be seen you can set the angle degree tolerance of ground facing triangles. The shape decimator will spawn a mesh that deletes any triangles it overlaps with. You can use any mesh object for this, but Mesh Optimizer Champ does come with a default decimator object that works well for piles. You can use subtract or union with the shape decimator. Subtract will completely delete all the triangles overlapped with the shape. Union will keep the shape, but adopt the material from the mesh. This is a good way of hiding any gaps that it might cause. You can change the decimator color and transparency. To change the location, rotation and scale of a decimator to make it fit in your mesh as you choose, you can do that using the transform offsets. In order to better see the shape decimator with your mesh, you can ghost the selected mesh and it will use the ghost color and transparency below. Once you've optimized your mesh, you'll be able to see how the various optimization functions have reduced the triangle count. If you're unhappy with the mesh, you can click Ctrl Z and simply undo it. That's everything for Mesh Optimizer Champ. I hope you find this tool useful. If you do, please feel free to drop a comment and of course share with others. If you need any support, You'll find my email address on the Gumroad page. I'll do my best to help you out. Bye for now.